How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student. And today we're going to be talking about nipple grafts and how to preserve your nipple graft quality to the point where you don't have to worry about them falling off. And I know this is a huge concern that a lot of my friends have when they're considering top surgery and whether or not they should opt in for getting nipple grafts. Obviously, there's both benefits and disadvantages of getting nipple grafts, but today I specifically want to talk about the concern of these grafts falling off because there's a couple of YouTube videos that talk about it, but there's not a lot of healthcare professionals talking about it who are trans on YouTube and to the you know public about what to expect when it comes to getting nipple grafts. And the main advantage of choosing to have nipple grafts is that eventually after a period of time of surgery, you can gain sensation back. And that's a pretty awesome thing about, you know, opting in for this. I am going to start the video off with saying that there should be no sincere concern about nipple grafts falling off. I feel like this is a concern that's often conflated because there's one or two cases that have been documented and talked about but the large majority of people will have preserved nipple graft function and will never have a problem with their nipples falling off but there are some things i'm going to share with you scientific evidence-based things to ease any anxiety someone may be having about getting their nipple grafts and their top surgery date is coming up so this video is for you because i don't want you to worry so this is all the facts that i'm going to give you to solidify the fact that you will be 100 percent fine when it comes to getting a nipple graft but i will also be talking about some of the things that might affect the survivability of a graft first off let's talk a little bit about what a nipple graft really is so it's essentially the nipple that you had before top surgery but it's been restructured and repositioned uh, back onto your chest so when you're getting top surgery you're done with this double incision periolar or any one um surgery type that technique that requires you know the nip the skin to be pulled down and the nipple to be replaced it'll need a nipple graft so the surgeon will cut out a nice little concentric circle of your nipple and then replace it into the correct position on your chest so it doesn't look really odd after the surgery so it's like uh let's say i t i had that video about the forearm skin graft where they took forearm skin and then created a shaft of a penis for gender affirming surgery same thing with nipple grafts they just take your same nipple and replant it into the skin alignment which corresponds to good anatomical aesthetics after your surgery so after this nipple graft is you know reinserted to the correct alignment that will make your chest look good after surgery this is when it is the most vulnerable to falling off most vulnerable for a graft rejection and that's because when that piece of nipple is cut out, it severs all blood supply to that part of the skin that makes up the nipple. So when the surgeon replants it into the right place of your existing skin, the blood circulation there needs time to grow into the graft. The most crucial time for this nipple to regain its blood vessel supply is the first week after surgery that's why when you when you take off your compression vest after the first week you realize that there's extra dressings that the surgeon will put on your nipples they're called bolster dressing and what that does is that it pushes the skin graft even tighter to your chest so there is no risk of that both nipple getting loose and falling off it adheres straight to your chest so that it has that nice tight seal so that new blood vessels can grow into it so after that first week new blood vessels are formed in that graft but they are super super delicate so it's still very important not to agitate that area of skin it's really good practice not to scratch at the screen i'll talk i'll be talking a little bit about shearing forces shearing forces are forces that brush against the graft and you want to avoid that as much as possible within the first three weeks when those blood vessels are delicate so try not to scratch your chest too much take a benadryl take a claritin put on hydrocortisone cream if it's itchy i know i know i know you want to itch your chest but your nipples are super super vulnerable at this time by three weeks those blood vessels get super strong and 
have really good established connections and by the six week mark, they regain the same amount of strength as regular skin tissue. That is to say that if you can get through the first week after surgery without, you know, taking off your post-surgical binder and your bolster dressing, you will be completely fine. Just don't mess with your grafts at all up until the three week mark where they're reestablishing those blood connections. But I doubt if you are the type of person to be queasy and someone who spent at least five to seven thousand dollars on your surgery, you're not going to be messing with your chest anytime soon because you want to get the best bang for your buck. So do not go into heavy spores and not start rubbing your chest against other things up until the three week mark where those blood vessels get a lot, lot stronger and gain some tensile strength. So that is to say that the likelihood of your nipple grafts falling off if you follow instructions that are given by your surgeon, you're not taking your binder off when you're not supposed to, you're not messing with your nipple dressings when you're not supposed to, your nipple grafts will be completely fine and they will not fall off. Follow the instructions that your surgeon gives you and you will be completely, completely set to have perfectly nice, sensational nipples post-surgery. Now, I do want to address some conditions and some things that you should know to further increase the preservation of your nipple grafts and some things that might affect your healing process post-surgery. And the first thing is smoking. I've talked about this in my previous videos on top surgery healing, but smoking disrupts micro vesicles, vessels that you can't even see in your body, but are essential for the healing process. That's why smokers tend to have conditions such as burger disease where they have poor blood circulation to their hands. The same thing will go post-surgery. So if you are a smoker, it's very, very good practice to stop smoking for a number of time before you get your surgery as recommended by your surgeon because it will make that healing process that much better. Also, other conditions such as blood disorders or something like diabetes that impede healing or impede your bleeding or clotting can affect your nipple graft or honestly your surgery results overall and how you heal from the surgery. So it's best if you have any underlying medical issues to uh, take your medications for those underlying issues, especially if you have diabetes, it's good to have your blood glucose under control and to have your hemoglobin A1C levels um, within the target ranges before you have your surgery, but this will be a conversation that you have with your surgeon. So if you have any underlying medical conditions that impair healing, it's best to talk to your top surgeon and figure out a plan on how to best preserve your nipple grafts. Anyways, that's all for this video on nipple grafts and nipple graft preservation and why you shouldn't really worry about you know, a nipple falling off because it's very, very, very rare. I, I want to emphasize it's super rare, super. It's okay to have anxiety over it, but know that if you are doing everything that your doctor tells you to do, if you're doing everything right, the chances of your nipples falling off is practically zero. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something. Please share it with someone who might benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life, advocacy work, and shenanigans, and I'll see y'all in the next video. This is Ben.